Many classic horror icons, such as Giger Xenomorphs, Silent Hill's Pyramid Head, and other disturbing creatures, often share common characteristics. Pale skin, dark sunken eyes, elongated faces, sharp teeth, and the like. These images inspire horror and revulsion in many, and with good reason. The characteristics shared by these faces are imprinted in the human mind. Many things frighten humans instinctively. The fear is natural and does not need to be reinforced in order to terrify. The fears are species-wide, stemming from dark times in the past when lightning could mean the burning of your tree home, thunder could be the approaching gallops of a stampede, predators could hide in darkness, and heights could make poor footing lethal. The question you have to ask yourself is this. What happened deep in the hidden eras before history began that could affect the entire human race so evenly as to give the entire species a deep, instinctual, and lasting fear of pale beings with dark, sunken eyes, razor-sharp teeth, and elongated faces? Just be careful out there. Fallout 3 contains several in-game radio stations. The most diverse and important station is Galaxy News Radio. Many players of the Evil Persuasion know that you can kill Three Dog, and he will be replaced by the technician, Margaret. She is not a charismatic person and has very little to say seeming to not enjoy her new announcing duties. She also never appears in person, and therefore cannot be killed. Once Three Dog is dead, you're stuck with Margaret. What most players do not know is that under certain circumstances, GNR will become a number station. No one is really sure which actions are needed to hear the number station in Fallout 3. It appears that you must kill Three Dog, because no one has reported hearing the number station with him still alive. It also appears that you have to skip over the quest, Galaxy News Radio, where you help boost the signal so that the station can be broadcast further than just the immediate DC area. This is easy enough to do with either a speech check or simply using the Fallout wiki to look up where to go next and advance the main plot. Finally, you definitely have to destroy Raven Rock. This is the actual trigger to turn GNR into a number station, and it will remain such for the rest of the game. However, the vast majority of the players who perform these three actions still continue hearing the standard GNR broadcast, so there must be several more requirements the community has yet to isolate. If you're lucky enough to have hit upon the right set of circumstances just after destroying Raven Rock, you will get the message, radio signal lost, and a few seconds later, radio signal found. You cannot, however, actually listen to GNR just yet, because you didn't boost the signal and are out of range of the broadcast at the exit of Raven Rock. Luckily, Raven Rock is situated in the mountains and is right near one of the few places outside DC that you can get high enough to catch the signal. So far, the confirmed locations to hear the GNR number stations are, within the immediate DC area, obviously. This is true for the regular GNR throughout the game. At the top of the Ferris wheel at Point Lookout. On the tops of some of the SATCOM arrays you can climb in the northwestern map area. On the roof of Tenpenny Tower. Then this may be within normal broadcast range anyway. On the highest point of the broken bridge around Arafu. Again, may be within broadcast range anyways. On some of the highest points of the mountaintops in the area near Raven Rock, 
This is obviously your easiest chance to first listen to the number station. When you tune in, you will hear an old familiar voice, Three Dog, despite the fact that you killed him earlier. However, you will quickly notice that he does not seem to be in character. So, I guess not technically Three Dog, but just the voice actor. He reads a series of numbers in a monotone, depressed sounding voice. He always recites a list of single digits between 9 and 12 characters long. For example, 9, 3, 7, 9, 1, 7, 2, 0, 3, 4. He never uses a multi digit number like 11 or 40. These numbers are followed by widely varying lengths of Morse code. This is then followed by the song, I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. All other music tracks seem to be inactive on the number station. The Morse code was the easiest part of the mystery to crack, as the code is widely available and many people actually know of it by heart. We quickly had a list of a great number of messages in English. Some sounded completely mundane and even comical, such as, Wash the car today, maybe Chinese for dinner. Or, Have you watched my YouTube video yet? I uploaded myself kicking bums in the nuts. You may be saying, But wait, YouTube doesn't exist in the Fallout universe. And you're right. As far as we could tell, all the messages sounded like they were based in our reality, somewhere near present day. Some of the messages, however, are quite sinister, such as, The Queen has died today. The world mourns, as on days like these, we are all Brits. Or, I can't believe they've actually done it. Not long left. The noise. I can't take the noise anymore. I have a pistol in the attic. Just recently, a player on the wiki forums noticed a message that brought to light the meaning of the messages. He was reading a thread that collected all known messages, transposed from Morse to English, and saw the line, one, two, zero, five, five, two, eight, Two, zero, one, zero. What are you talking about? You'll be missed. He realized this referred to the recent death of Gary Coleman, and then quickly realized the numbers were the time and date of death. He immediately scanned through the messages to try and find more examples of this apparent future telling by a game that's more than a year old. The next message he read shocked him and pushed him to enlist the aid of others to decipher the codes. The message was 9454202010 Accident in the Gulf, several dead, oil spill apparently averted. He realized this was the BP explosion and the erroneous day one assessment that the well was not leaking. From this point on, all numbers will be transcribed as times and dates. All times are given in game, in military format, and remain so in this document. Numerous members of the Fallout Wiki message board began looking over the messages to see what else we could learn. We quickly found that most of the dates were after the game had been released, yet oddly, some were from the past. 2200 hours, 15 minutes, April 15th, 1865. He's dead, and blame will probably be placed on that actor, Booth. Johnson better not cheat me out of the payment. Many who have seen this message have been vocal about their doubts on the official version of the Lincoln assassination. As the community quickly started piling up interpretations of the messages, 
the mods of the site summarily banned everyone who had posted in or even read the thread. All reference to the number station was removed from the Fallout wiki, and filtering software was put in place to prevent reposting of any relevant information. A few people, however, are trading emails and slowly finishing the translation of the remaining messages and putting dates to the existing ones. The Queen has died today. The world mourns, as on days like these, we are all Brits. 400 hours, 2 minutes, March 19th, 2014. Have you watched my YouTube video yet? I uploaded myself kicking bums in the nuts. 2400 hours, 16 minutes, December 24th, 2012. I can't believe Britney's actually won an Oscar. 2100 hours, 33 minutes, February 27th, 2023. I can't believe they've actually done it. Not long left. They were warned. They just had to keep pushing the boundaries of science. The noise. I can't take the noise anymore. And the light. The universe is slowly unraveling around us. I'm not going to wait for death. I have a pistol in the attic. This is actually the only message not preceded by a string of numbers. It may be worth noting that the latest date on any of the messages is 100 hours, 27 minutes, July 6th, 2027. When I was eight, I stayed up late at night watching television. My mother always told me never to turn on the television exactly at 4.44 a.m. If you ever did, you would hear clicks and heavy breathing in the next room. If you checked, a black shadow with red eyes would glare at you. She also told me that if I wore another person's glasses, I could see that person's death. It's true. I put on my mother's glasses since then, I've always been a little fearful of my father. A couple of months ago, I began my classes at university. As I was preparing for my freshman year, I was able to find everything that I needed, except for a laptop. I'm not exactly very good at letting a dollar go for something, especially when I could get that something for less. I scoured the internet for good deals on laptops, finding none that suited my frugal habits. Classes were only two weeks away, and I was becoming desperate for a computer. Several days later, I saw an ad in the newspaper for a laptop that was being sold for only $600, and not too far from where I live. It was a very nice Dell laptop, too seeming odd that it was being sold for almost a thousand less than store price. I drove to the seller's address the following day. The house was further out of the city, butting up to a dense forest. Outside of the house was an old Chevrolet, and a mess of old signs and other various vintage-looking items. I rang the doorbell, and a thin man in a flannel jacket came to the door. When I asked about the laptop... He looked almost relieved and told me he was ready to sell it immediately. Luckily, I came with cash in hand, and after proof of good condition, I went home with a new computer. Excited to have my first self-bought laptop, I powered it up and began uploading my own programs and applications onto it. Upon searching the hard drive, I found a folder hidden away on it which was odd because the man selling it told me that the memory was wiped clean and ready for a fresh start. The folder was titled 9 17 10. 
presumably a date. I open the folder, revealing six videos and three pictures. The first video was simply titled, 001. The video was shot from a shaky camcorder inside of a vehicle, recording a woman walking out of a bar, getting into her car at night. After a couple of seconds, the woman drove off, and almost immediately, the person recording the video began to drive after her. The video ended after 24 seconds. It almost seemed like the cameraman had been waiting for the woman for a while. Come to think of it, I wasn't too alarmed by this at the time. Just a little unsettled. I opened the next video file, titled 002. I assumed that this was the next part of the first video. My assumption was right. As it began with the camera on top of the console, facing out of the windshield. It was raining now leading me to believe that this was a short while after the first video ended. I could barely make out that the vehicle two cars ahead of this one was the same car that the woman at the bar left in. This went on for an unsettling 47 seconds before the camera cut out. I began to get a little nervous, fearing that this might take a turn for the worse. But, as if I was watching a television show, I wanted to see where this was headed. Not totally concerned yet, I decided to press on. The third video was, of course, titled 003. This was the one that got me officially concerned. The clip began from the same shaky hands as the first clip. It was now pouring rain outside of the car, and I could barely make out a figure in a fur coat with an umbrella walking to the front door of a house. I could only assume who this person was and whose house this belonged to. The figure entered the house and closed the door. The following stillness greatly unnerved me. The only thing that could be heard was the sound of rain dumping on top of the car. After roughly two minutes of this nerve-wracking nothingness, lights inside of the house cut out. Another minute or so went by before the camera was placed onto the console again, and the sound of a person exiting the car broke the stillness. After the car door quietly closed, another figure this time, hooded, could be seen walking towards the house. I began to feel a knot tightening in the bottom of my stomach as the stranger walked around the back of the house. Whoever this person was, they definitely weren't supposed to be there. After another couple of seconds, lights to the outside of the house cut out. It was pitch black. Only the rain alerted me that the camera was still rolling. The video ended after about nine minutes of rain and darkness. I was now pretty sure that this was not an innocent little project or anything of that nature, and I began to feel stupid for not checking this laptop seller's credibility. Was this person stalking the woman? the same person that I met with earlier. Throughout the whole experience, I had a dormant thought in the back of my head to call the police, but I wasn't ready just yet. Reluctantly now, I began the fourth video. It was dark, again, but the rain had stopped, and I was left with only silence. Not long after the clip began, I could make out the sound of footsteps on gravel, getting louder as someone was approaching the vehicle. The car door opened, and the dome light was turned on, and I could tell that the camera was now on the floor of the car, pointing out towards the roof. I heard some fumbling in the background, and suddenly a thump 
sounded from the back of the truck. An arm abruptly obscured the camera's view, and a large tarp could be seen being pulled out from the car. I had only one scenario running through my head, and I hope that it wasn't true. The person picked up the camera and put it back onto the console and began to back up. They drove for a good three minutes before parking in a branched off road and exiting the car to work on the load they were carrying. Six minutes after, the car was moved again to a different location. The camera was picked up and carried underhanded away from the car. I could see now that it was the same shit bucket truck that was in front of the seller's house. I was about ready to call the cops on this creep while the camera turned towards the house. It was a completely different house than the one I visited. I was a little relieved by this, though it didn't prove anything. As the fourth video came to an end, I was wondering whether or not I was prepared to see what came next. I could only hope that this was a prank, or at least had a happy ending. Zero, zero, 005 began inside the house. It was extremely dark, and the only thing I could make out was a figure that would occasionally walk in front of the camera. It was also quiet for the first few moments minus the occasional barking of a dog outside. Eventually, a small sound started to appear. The sound soon escalated to a loud, muffled scream. Shaking and struggling sounds became more apparent as time went on, as well as crying. A light abruptly came on, and the camera was lifted and panned to the center of the room revealing a beaten and bloodied woman tied to a chair. From what I could make out, this was, in fact, the woman from the bar. The camera zoomed in on her face for a while before stopping. I couldn't believe that this was happening. The original hope that this was a movie or something that had long since diminished. With only one video remaining, I was beginning to fear for my own safety. I locked my door, closed my blinds, pushed onward. I began 006 with a small hope that this woman was still alive, that I could have saved her. The final installment of this horror show began in a bathroom setting. The camera was placed on the counter, facing a mirror, in which I could see a door. The only sound I could make was a familiar sound that destroyed my hopes. Power tools. I sat in front of the screen with a bated breath before the sound stopped. More silence. Then, heavy footsteps accompanied by what sounded like something being dragged. The doorknob turned. The door was pushed open. Out of the darkness of the rest of the house appeared a middle-aged woman dressed in what I can only describe as lab attire, sporting a respirator and a pair of long rubber gloves. This, for some strange reason, gave me a small amount of relief. In the reflection, the woman struggled to drag something to the bathtub. As she hoisted it onto the tub, I could see that it was a large, black garbage bag. It was surreal. I felt like I was dreaming. It was like I was watching a horror movie unfolding on the screen. She lifted the bag up from the tub, now empty, 
except for whatever entrails that still dropped out. She picked up the camera and placed it on the ground, facing the tub. On the floor in front of the bathtub was an assortment of corrosive substances, several other empty containers. The woman began to dump the liquids into the tub, which was followed by an awful, awful noise that I can only describe as pop rocks mixed with coke. The video ended, and I was left bewildered and panicked. I finally opened the pictures. The first was a picture of the truck. Second was a picture of the girl, tied up, before she was beaten. And the third picture brought up a corrupted file notice. But maybe that was a good thing. I managed to keep the two pictures before I handed the laptop over to the police. I was reimbursed my $600, along with a bonus. Apparently, the victim was the young girlfriend of the older woman's ex-husband. The older woman was arrested almost a year before, but was freed of all charges due to a lack of evidence and the ex-husband was incarcerated instead. I guess this was the missing link that the case needed, and I hope it solved any unanswered questions they had. Although, I'm not sure who the man in the flannel jacket was, or how he got a hold of the laptop, or how he owns the same truck as the murderer. I guess I'll just leave that to the police. In rural southern Illinois, a toy company began selling realistic baby dolls to expectant mothers. But apparently, after the mother had her child, the toy baby would start crying. Eventually, the rocking motion advertised to calm it down wouldn't work, and you couldn't get it to stop without shaking it. Eventually, when it started crying, the parent would have to beat it and even then the beatings and thrashings would have to get harder and harder to get it to be quiet. The only thing that seemed to shut the baby doll up permanently was to bash its head against the wall to destroy whatever mechanism triggered the crying. On more than one occasion though, neighbors called the authorities to report child abuse, and when the police arrived, they found the bloody remains of infants smeared across the walls and the floor. In most cases, the mother couldn't understand why the police were there. She said that she just got rid of the stupid doll. She calmly stated, as she rocked a baby-shaped bundle in her arms. <laughs> 